All right, so now being six o'clock, I'll call the August 14th meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. First item on the agenda is a six o'clock appointment with Ethan Stiles from the Board of Assessors to discuss um, their recommendation for legal counsel to represent the town in um, Cisco versus Plimpton ATB tax abatement appeal. So I'll turn it over to you, Ethan. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Um, for, everyone, for everyone who's watching, my name is Ethan Stiles and I'm the clerk. Ethan, do you want to come up oh, just sure. so we can get you on um, a mic here? You can take this one. Perfect. You can sit if you want, or I think it reaches. All right, then how about you take that one? I'll take that one. Does reach. Okay. Perfect. Anyway, so, all right, so I'm Ethan Stiles, and I am the clerk of the um, Plimpton Board of Assessors this year. And the Board of Selectmen have asked me to come here to talk to them tonight about our recommendation for uh, legal counsel for the um, Cisco abatement hearings. Um, we, had two, we had two very well qualified candidates um, apply for the position, attorneys Ellen Hutchinson and uh, Richard Bowen. And, um, and we did deliberate, and after, and after um, you know, careful review of the, uh, the resume, their resumes, uh, we, uh, re we uh, suggested uh, that Ms. Hutchinson be, um, be appointed uh, to, uh, to represent us in our, in our, in our legal, um, in our legal matter with, uh, with, uh, with Cisco in this abatement proceedings. Now, um, now, uh, just get, now, just give a brief overview of what, of what these proceedings are. Cisco was filed for an, for an abatement for two, year, for two years, fiscal 15 and fiscal 16. And they've asked for, um, you know, they've suggested they've value, that they're seriously overvalued. Um, I think, I don't have the exact figures, but um, I be believe when we last talked about, they were, I think they were valued roughly around 65 million uh, and, that, and that's for all, you know, the land, the, the property, and all that. And I think they were looking for, a va looking for a value of somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 million. So essentially, a, a enormous decrease. And uh, and they have applied for abatements, before, abatements, and they were and they were denied. And they appealed those, and they appealed 15 and 16. And um, I. I'm not sure if they applied for 17 yet, um, but, it, but anyway. But uh, considering the um, the the, um, the decrease in the revenues that we would that we would receive from Cisco if their abatement was granted, we believe that um, that the uh, that the town should uh, oppose their abate, abatement at the appellate tax board, and have suggested legal counsel. Now, this is a specialized field. Um, we we have ha we have also um, requested the the appointment of a of a. Um, of, a, of an experienced um, um, appra appraiser, um, uh, Stephen, Stephen Elliott, and he's and he's agreed to um, to, assi to assist uh, to assist us. And um, I believe we've um, given you the figures of um, the sort of rates these um, Attorney Hutchinson and, Mis and Mr. Elliott would um, would expect. I believe that um, that those were sent by email um, to you. So I think you have the n the numbers that you're looking at. But I think when you look at what it's going to cost us for, for to uh, to appeal to uh, handle this appeal versus what the town is going to um, the amount of decrease in revenue that the town's going to face. I think you're going to find that that number vastly dwarfs this this number. And I'm not and I'm not ex and, and those numbers are on the assumption that this goes the whole that goes through a full through a full hearing a trial probably about a two day trial and um, and results in a decision of the Intel Tax Board. If there's any room to negotiate a settlement that would be uh, more amenable to both parties, then that that of course that option is not closed. So if you guys have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. Um, but anyway, that's the basis for our request for this um, for the, for this um, this outlay for legal for for, uh, for legal and um, expert assistance. Do we need to take any action? I don't know. Um, so, uh, so you ended up uh, a couple questions. Yeah, sure. sure. Two, you ended up with two candidates. Yes. Um, and you evaluated them based on their resumes. Yes. Um, w there, now there was a, a ter Richard Bowen and Attorney Allen Hutchinson. Um, I, we, I did meet uh, uh, Attorney Bowen here um, when we had that uh, that that meeting the other day mm -hmm. last week, and. Um, 
and, 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 and you know, obviously a very, very well qualified, uh, accomplished attorney. But um, I'm not sure, and if I haven't, and if I haven't, um, if you don't have the resumes, I mean, obviously, you know, you have Attorney Bowen's resume. Um, but when we looked at Attorney Hutchinson's resume, we felt that her practice was more strongly focused toward a um, ish, uh, practice before the ATB as opposed to a more uh, general, um, um, you know, municipal practice. And we thought that that, that, that that her, her level of achievement uh, was um, was substantial and more qualified to handle a complex case involving commercial property that can be you know that 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 you know it's a it's a large operation and you know finding comparables for it is going to you know take some um, some some doing and some compelling argument and some arguments on both sides, uh, both for Cisco and for and for Punton. There you know obviously it's going to be a a a, um, a real. Um, you know, a, a real argument as to uh, what is what is what is reasonable. You probably have to go to look at the other parts of the country, perhaps, to find equivalent um, operations. So, essentially, we wanted the best experienced candidate. And if you, we did send you the um, um, the uh, the resumes for both, well, for Attorney Hutchinson, because as I said you already had Attorney Bowens, um, you will find that she did attach a, you know a number of her cases. I think about a dozen cases of. Um, uh, where you could we could see you know the work that was accomplished and she summarized it and I thought and I think we all thought that was very impressive. Um, if you don't have that, I can have. Um, I don't think we ever got that. Uh, um, see, and I see I did have a I, I have my my own copy. Unfortunately, my copy is but missing two of the three pages of cases. So if maybe I can once I'm through with here, I can ask I can ask Deb um, to send Bree a copy of the res of the resume question. So we have a question of which attorney. The concern has at least come up in, in some discussion. I, I think the trial date's already is fast approaching. Yes, it, it is. I believe I want to say September 25th was the date was the date that's. Um, I mean, I, 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 it, it concerns me that that's very very soon and very very soon for a, either attorney to prepare and. Um, um, but I guess that's a separate issue. Um, well. I don't well, think. That, so. Yeah, that is a concern. <laughs> yeah, I, we um, in a brief conversation we had with uh, Attorney Bowen, he uh, assumed that you were filing for continuancy. Uh, that that would be a re that would be a um, a reason reasonable request, and I think that if counsel were brought on board, I think that would be the first thing that would be done done in this case. I mean. Uh, the board itself can fi can file obviously for continuance. It's just a simple form, uh, and I think that council probably would, you know, if we appoint council that they would that they would request a further continuance of reasonable time of reasonable time, um, you know, and obviously and, and request that of the um, of of the opposing council on Cisco's behalf. And if Cisco doesn't refuse to do that, then obviously they would have to go to the board themselves and make that motion. Um, I, you know, however, I would think that if if either attorney said said, well, here's the trial date. It's too soon. I can't do I can't do anything. My schedule's full up. Um, then I think that uh, that attorney would probably not would not pr present themselves as uh, suitable candidates. Uh, granted, though, obviously that. In terms of practicalities, you know, work really can't start until you guys approve the contract because this a figure is over five thousand. I believe that requires um, board of selectmen approval. Well, we got an email from um, Deb back. Uh, looks like it was six days ago. It said Ellen Hutchinson will represent the town in the Cisco ATB case. So it looks like you know the decision's already been made. Um, we've got an estimate of $21,200 for assuming a two-day trial. Um, there will be some additional costs associated as well for transcripts. So, um, yeah, I think our concern was that we're, we're kind of behind the eight ball to get started. Mm -hmm. This is late. We probably should have had this in place um, a while ago. And I know, just for myself, I'd love for us to get together We'll need to do it in executive session to discuss strategy rather mm -hmm. than betting litigation to find out what um, Ellen's strategy is, what she's done, you know, is she working towards a continuous continuance um, just so that we can kind of find out what her game plan is and make sure that we have all of our ducks in a row so that we're prepared when um, we finally go to trial with this. Yes, I, would, I would think, I think that, would be, that would be reasonable and necessary to do. Um, of course. You know, um, I haven't talked to Deb yet. I was supposed to today, but I just got tied up doing other things. And um, 
I'm not sure you know, what sort of communication she's had with uh, Attorney Hutchinson since that email you quoted. So I can get back to you, I can get back to you though, or she can get back to Bree on that and say you know, um, where, where they are in the process, what their understanding is. I have a concern. Um, I thought we got information that you were talking to uh, both um, Attorney Bowen and KP. And I don't know where that came from. And so our initial assumption was they're both counsels for the town. They're both well-respected. Good, you know, your choice. Then all of a sudden uh, walked in and we find out that Ellen Hutchinson um, is, the, is gonna represent the town. Now I did go online and I took a look at a lot of the uh, things that she's done and um, it appears she's well qualified, but I'm a little concerned where that first information came from because we're in this together. If this goes through and the town loses it, it's like 360,000, give or take, that we're gonna lose in revenue every year. And that's a big concern to me. Um, I'm also surprised too that I haven't done this before uh, from the assessor's side, but don't you normally bring the attorneys in when you interview them rather than just a resume? Uh, that, that, is, that is an approach I believe that could be taken. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, schedule, our, our schedules about the assessors, we meet about, we can only meet about once a month due to, um, due to certain, obliga certain obligations outside of it. Um, so I don't think we, ha I don't think we, there was really a good time for all, all members of the board to, uh, to meet with the attorneys prior, prior to the need to, um, to, to, select, to select an attorney, at least propose an attorney for selection. I mean, ultimately, I believe that, you know, when we, when we say, you know, you're, you're the person for us, we always put in the little caveat, subject to, appro subject to appropriation, essentially means that if, um, you, know, um, <coughs> you know, that um, an appropriation must be approved by, uh, by, by this body here. Um, so, so yes, I agree that it would have been ideal to meet with them in, per to meet with them in person, but unfortunately the timing just didn't work out, and uh, Dykes and I do apologize um, for, my, you know, for many of my own failings in, in, that, issue, in that regard. <coughs> Well, it's going to take a good deal of our legal budget, but in a sense, that's minuscule because, you know, if you spend twenty-three thousand and are able to reduce that three hundred and sixty by a substantial amount, yeah. that's what we'd want to see. Um, I just feel like though there was a little a letdown. One in, I'm not sure where we got the KP from. I'm surprised you didn't ask KP just because. I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure they probably were floated around in the beginning. You know, someone may have someone may have asked us, "Do you want to use KP?" And I think we probably said, "Yes, we would consider we would consider them." Uh, but I'm. But and of course, Attorney Bone, you know, has had a prior relationship with KP, and you know, and that may have been uh, may have may have subject to some of the uh, the um, any confusion. Uh, but uh, but I. I'm not sure if we reached out to them or if they responded to us. Uh, I know one or two other attorneys we we did reach out to, and they said they couldn't do it, or they had, um, or or they couldn't, um, or that uh, they weren't, they, or they. Um, I think one or two other attorneys said we can't do it in that time fr in the time frame that um, the the 25th date uh, of next month, and that was back in and that was back sometime in May or June. So, I don't think we had too too many candidates. Um, okay. On the table, and and, um, and I and you know and I don't want to make excuses, but um, you know I'm sure the I'm sure the uh, the board uh, knows that um, that our administrative um, sorry um, our um, senior clerk I believe that's her proper title uh, left recently, and so our assistant appraiser has been um, you know trying to handle all the all the jobs and she's recently hired a um a new senior clerk and so it's administrative assistant administrative assistant yeah, I um mean. yes i mean essentially the the person who's uh who's, you know you need you, you have in the office you know handling the phones um greeting sure. the citizens and all sure. and that sort of thing so anyway so you know um i don't want to make excuses but i do want to point out that if um that that has been um an issue that um you know that the person was leaving and we needed to select someone to come in and in that role and try and find someone with any kind of experience with the assessor's office to uh, uh, to, he to help um, smooth the, um, the transition. Well, we're in this together. Yeah. <laughs> we get so is it a fait accompli? Has this attorney been 
hired or pending our approval or pending appropriation? I believe that would be a fair understanding, at least if I were the attorney, and I'm not, I would, you know, I would sort of consider myself provision, provisionally but final, subject to final approval. I probably wouldn't um, expend too much time on, you, on this, in this, this case until I actually you know, got, got the okay from the hiring from the authority that says, okay, you know, we, approved, you know, we approved the board of um, selectmen's recommendation, uh, get, go on get, and get started doing, doing your thing. I mean, I agree with John. I, I, um, I somewhere we had crossed channels here, and I think we all thought originally it was uh, K and P would be in the flow of things. I, I think my concern is, I mean, this is a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar year thing, and God forbid it doesn't go well, we want to at least feel like we were well represented. And, um, I mean, it sounds like this person on paper is fine. I, I don't know if we can set it up. I would love to meet her <coughs> if that's at all possible. Um, just so, however it goes, we feel comfortable we were, uh, we were making a wise choice. Um, I don't think, you know, I, again, I can't, speak for the, I can't speak for the woman, but, um, but if I were in her shoes, I would be happy to meet with, uh, with, with the, uh, the representative that uh, was seriously considering my application uh, for, for legal representation, uh, just as any attorney would for a client uh, that's, you know, for a serious, for a serious case. Um, but you know, whatever we have, whatever you guys want to do, I would really urge, you know, speed. Um, what, was that, what was that phrase you used, Mark? Um, the one about haste and um, deliberate haste, or something like that. Patient urgency. Patient urgency. <laughs> More on the side of urgency than well, patience. We might be close to impatient <laughs> yes. urgency yeah, on this one. Uh, this, this is too big to get wrong. Yeah. Well, why couldn't we, um, Ellen? Is is uh, the board of assessors' choice uh, to represent us as the attorney? Um, why can't we run things by KP as well, or um, Rich Bowen for a second set of eyes, just to make sure? Because this is so big. And well, just, it, you know, we did mention it to Rich Bowen. He said Ellen Hutchison is a comparable. You know. Yeah, competent attorney, yeah. right. So I, in that sense, they're the experts and it's their choice there. I would like to talk, have her come in, though, and at least have some sense of what we're, because this is going to be a long, drawn-out thing. This isn't going to be something that goes quick. We're going to be in probably this not. probably for the next year. It, it could be. I mean, I do think that the, that the September 25th date is unrealistic to expect a trial, but it's definitely more than enough time for us to get counsel um, and, get, and, and get them to have a continuance. I mean, obviously, there's no guarantees when you have to ask, especially if you ask the court for a continuance because the other side wants to be difficult and say, where were you, three, where were you four months ago when we, were, when we were dealing with this? I, um, I would feel comfortable making you know, us available to Ellen at her, yeah, at her calendar. And if we can't all be here, if I can't be here, I have no problem. Okay. Um, yeah, that okay. sounds good. Okay. Is that doable, you think? I, I think so. If now, if there's uh, any pushback, let us know, and then we can talk about it. I, I, think, I think so. I mean, ultimately, because I understand it, you know, you're, you know, yes, we can make, we can make the recommendation, but ultimately, you're the, you're the people who have to approve this because this is not an insubstantial amount of money we're talking about here. So, ultimately, I would, I would suggest that. That that would be a that would be a um, a reasonable way to go about it. Okay. Good. Good. Let's try to get that set up as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. Hopefully next week, and then um, when was the abatement filed? Do you know originally? Uh, well, it was it, if I if my if my if the emails all right. So oh wait, I'm so, I'm sorry. Um, let's see, it's two, fiscal 2016 to fiscal 2017 that they are. Um, okay. That, that they're appealing. So, fiscal 2016. Um, so I believe that they probably would have fought, you know, whenever, because the abatement deadline is set by statute, and but it changed because of the shift from biannual to quarterly billing. So they, whenever they first filed it, would um, it would probably be, you know, I, I would like to say October of, you know, I want to say October 2016, but I can't. But I, but my my calendar might be off. By it. All right. Well, then my follow-up question is why why do we wait so long to get an attorney on board? 
Um, I I honestly, you know, the, uh, the I think that there had been some discussion of negotiation, but I but and um, and ultimately I don't think it went. It didn't go anywhere, obviously, because we're now we're at the situation. But um, but Cisco didn't push it because they didn't ask for a trial date, and you know, and there's also the issues of the appellate tax board. Um, they may not be able to get to it right away. I mean, I know that um, some of our local citizens who have filed for abatements have um, have expressed frustration with um, the inherent the uh, you know the backlog of the appellate tax board. Um, so I don't. So I you know I don't think it you know it was um, you know. You know, anyone was really pushing for this. You know, if Cisco wanted to drive it hard, you know, hard and get and get in there, they probably could have. But I think that there was room for discussion, and eventually, you know, there's just too far. The parties are just too far apart. Okay. All right. So when we meet with Ellen, is this will be for this piece to discuss? Well, me to get a little history and then her sort of synopsis of how we quickly go forward. Okay, so both. Yeah. So yeah, we, can, we can meet her in open session, then we can go into executive session to um, discuss uh, strategy. If, if that's yeah, right, strategy sure. Strategy part, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Exactly. okay. Yeah. So why don't we try to schedule something right. next week? Um, I think we're booked at 6 o'clock, aren't we, for a, um, yes. a meeting? Fire. But, um, but we can do it 5.30. come in early, 5.30, and... You know, maybe we'll just meet Ellen. We'll go into executive session. Camera won't be rolling then. Mm -hmm. And then um, at the end, when we're done at 6 o'clock, we can introduce Ellen to. Uh, or if she needed later, we could fit sure. her. Or we can we yeah. fit her in later. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. work so around we'll work her. With you. We'll work with your schedule. Oh, okay, so let me, let, me, um, let me go up to the assessor's office and, and, tell, and tell them what you've decided. And, you know, re and we'll arrange to uh, try and get Ellen here for next Monday night. Great. Yeah, I mean, one thing you mentioned, your clerk this year? Yes. Oh, who's chairperson? Uh, Jocelyn Anderson's chairperson. Okay. Okay. I thought you were still. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very much. For Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So, Art, since you're here, why don't we take you out of order? Um, all right. So, we've got you to talk about the Wolf Rock Farm follow-up, and then also we were going to talk about. Um, Small event permitting, but I don't know if we've heard back from council yet on that yet, so I think oh. we'll have to hold that one. Yeah, we have not heard back. Okay. Which one was that? Uh, 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 small, um, small event. Um, oh, small permit. event. Small event. Okay, Whether I just didn't hear it. Uh, permit. Okay. Okay. All right. So you want to talk about Wolf Rock? Um, yeah, there isn't any any more news on the on the horse show side. There is another one coming up, scheduled on the. Uh, the, the South Shore or, uh, or South Coast website for sep Sunday, September 24th. And I believe that is a Sunday. Um, so we should have something in place then. I know we are doing some research um, on a number of things um, with regards to permits um, that may be necessary. Um, we're going to have to see if, in fact, there are permits in town. Um, but we're working diligently on that, um, and we'd be happy to present our findings to the board um, based on our bylaws and, and some other things we're taking a look at now. Um, so that, that's, the, that's the, the horse show event side of things. Um, I would also like to, on a, on a very positive note, um, compliment Jim Mulcahy for his, his idea on a hazardous waste day. Uh, it happened Saturday morning, from this past Saturday morning from 9 to 12 uh, at the transfer station and was an enormous success. Um, uh, Clean Harbors was there. They were the ones that took care of it. Uh, there were six people in hazmat suits. Um, we were requested uh, or told that due to their insurance regulations, residents must remain in their cars. But they came to the trunks and rear seats like worker bees. And the traffic moved in and out of there uh, incredibly efficiently. At one point, we had cars backed up almost down a ring road. Um, 
and, and it never stopped from 9 to probably a few minutes before 12. I mean, it, it was constant three hours. Um, and I am happy also to report the uh, town meeting approved $5,000, and we came in under budget. By $20, By I $20. <laughs> oh, my God. Congratulations. That's but terrific. it's still under budget. <laughs> Great job. So I, you didn't have to turn anybody away. That was perfect. Uh, no. Um, I did have a, a few people in the afternoon who looked around and said, where's the hazardous waste? And so I had to tell them they, they missed it. But I had uh, some little info, information uh, sheets printed up so that if anyone does come in, uh, Clean Harbors has a Braintree facility which folks can go to on Saturday morning from 8 to 12. Um, I believe it's number one Hill Street. It's near the shipyard. And they can pay to get rid of their um, hazardous waste. Uh, same thing they took down here. Um, and it's, it's not terribly expensive. My former next door neighbor used that when she was selling her house and she made a couple of trips with her station wagon up there and she said they were very very nice, efficient, and it didn't cost a whole lot of money for what she had. Um, so I'll be handing those to folks um, if, if they truly need it. Um, Jim was there Saturday morning and uh, he, said, uh, he said maybe we'd like to do this again next year, uh, next August. Um, so again, a FinCom and town meeting approval, um, we'll, we'll probably do it again next year. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. And if, if you know, you don't spend the money, you don't spend the money. So exactly. I think um, it's a great idea. We had so many compliments yeah. that, that people were so thrilled. Just, oh, that's a great idea and, you know, wonderful that you had it. and. Uh, People are truly happy about it. I think I went through it, and the key was not getting out of the car. I thought that was, because I remember many years ago when we had one, where we'd walk the stuff up, and it was kind of cumbersome, and nobody was quite sure. what That worked perfectly. Yeah, it, it, it did. Um, it, it speeded things along, but that's one of their insurance regulations. Yeah, good. So it, it wasn't the towns, but it made perfect sense. And of course, they had the white hazmat suits on and everything, and uh, uh, just it, it was terrific. I was a little perfect disappointed though. The last one I went, they used to wear the white hats too. Oh. It looked like Ghostbusters. <laughs> Put it in the suggestion box. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must have been awful hot in those suits anyway. It was warm. Oh, yeah, they Good job, get though. them off right away at the end of their shift. Good job. And uh, Jim says you were the catalyst for all this, so good job. Oh, uh, Thank you very much for your efforts. Just back to the, the permit process again. I, I don't think you got CC'd on this. We did send off to Rich Bowen. Um, as he requested last Wednesday, all those um, protocols that you gave us, both on large event and small event, right. asking him to comment particularly on small event on what would, should be or could be required permitting, if anything. So we're waiting to hear back, and that'll be one more input. I actually had never seen the small event um, it was sort of guidance, a uh, couple yeah. page thing. It, that was actually really good. It's, I, it's I mean, just a, was meant as a planner. Yeah, and you know, I mean, a help. Yeah, and, and really a very nice help for anyone doing a small event. On these are things you ought to think about. And I think the piece we just have to fit in is if there's any actual obligatory permitting that we want to mm -hmm. that we want to require. And hopefully, he'll get back to us on that. Just so we're not working across angles on this. We'll let you know when we hear back from. Cause okay, it, appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate your input. So, it was a fun day. It was. It really was. Good. And uh, we're, one, one other thing we're doing, um, it'll be delivered tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., we're putting in a 250-gallon waste oil container Ooh. Um, at the transfer station. Um, and uh, so I'm, we should be able to start working with that right away once we have a lock on it. Um, the uh, spill tray came in today, 
Um, Denison Lubricants or a uh, division of them, Boston Green, is providing the tank and the, uh, and the spill tray and, and they will be coming and getting rid of the waste oil. Because I did have to turn away quite a bit of waste oil Saturday morning. Um, you know, 30 gallons in this vehicle and I think that's money there. So, um, and I said, within two weeks, we will have a tank. You can put it right in there and it won't cost the town anything, you know, um, where they would charge us right. $50 for uh, So how do you get to the tank? I mean, is tank going to be in the ground? No, no, it'll be above ground. Um, have some sort of a staging? Yeah, they... Um, they're, uh, the one that uh, my son was a service manager in Weymouth, and the tank was probably that big around and probably stood four feet high. Oh, okay. I'm I thought not it was sure. Tall. Okay. And it's uh, some kind of plastic. Okay. Polypropylene, Polypropylene or probably. Whatever yeah. it is. Um, and then it, it comes with a cover with a lock and a hasp, and we'll have signage that will say, you know, uh, please see attendant because we, we we will have to check the waste oil by smell and looking at it to make sure it's not contaminated. That's the only thing they want. Um, in there, you can put motor oil, you can put um, hydraulic fluid, which, which is just a highly refined oil product, mm -hmm. uh, transmission fluid, um, any any vehicle fluids. Uh, petroleum-based fluids can go in there. Uh, however, they don't want it mixed with antifreeze or water. That will contaminate it. Um, and uh, they re recycle this, right? Yes, they do. Yep, yep. Which is uh, again the reason for not contaminate, contaminating it. So the attendants at the uh, transfer station will will have to smell it. You can smell it. Um, antifreeze sure. um, or, or, so, or gasoline mm -hmm. and so we'd have to turn that away but uh, uh, other than that when we get 250 gallons uh, it's a simple phone call a truck comes connects to it pumps it out and we're, we're good uh, they also pick up at uh, Plumpton service station uh, they're all over the place all over New England um, so uh, good company reliable and they live next door to me. Great idea. We might even get a little money out of this, right? Yeah, I hate to say this on camera, but yes, when we were paying three and a half dollars a gallon for gasoline, uh, my son was selling it back to them at 75 cents a gallon. <laughs> oh boy. Because it has value. Uh, but now the price of gasoline, of, of oil per barrel is down Sure. And so uh, there's a, a fee of a hundred dollars to pick it to pick it up, but that will go as the price of get, uh, a barrel of oil goes up, that price will go down because it has value to them. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure some of that stuff has been ending up in your in your canisters anyway, so. Yeah, so the, the more we can, like sharps and everything else, the more we can keep out of the waste stream, the better. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, absolutely is right. Great. Well, thank you, Art, very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so on to update, updates and discussions, community paradigm executive search for town administrator follow-up. Do we have any anything to report on that? I uh, just talked to um, <clears throat> Bernie before he left, and he, he said it would be about a week before they'd have some feedback for us. and. They would get in touch with so us. So they'll attend the meeting then to give us feedback, or um, I didn't how ask them how. Okay, yeah. so but we'll I have assume, feedback. Yeah, okay, yeah. I assume they'll come in. I would think so. In too. fact, I think he did say that they, they'll want to sit down with us and go through. Okay. Uh, he suggested now that I think about a workshop meeting. Okay. Okay, not a regular meeting. Okay. All right. Oh, good. I think that makes more sense too because we can spend some time on yeah, it. Yeah, so we'll have to look at our schedule, but we'll wait to hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, employment opportunities, fire clerk interviews. Uh, we did do the interviews. Uh, the chief, I believe, has a uh, candidate in mind, but I haven't heard uh, since he's hospital or ill 
I haven't heard where he went with that, so I'd rather not say okay. until. All right, well, so we'll just hold that yeah. one till next week? Right. Okay. But there is a candidate that we think would take it. Perfect. All right. Um, assessor, administrative assistant interviews, that position has been filled, so we right. can scratch that. Fire EMS, hire consultant. Uh, all four have confirmed they'll be in, so we so start within, next mm -hmm. weekend, uh, next Monday, I mean, and the Monday after two, two a night. Perfect. Six o'clock and eight o'clock. I'll send you the resend the. Okay, terrific. All right, solar. Um, absolutely nothing happened. It's, everything's in uh, the uh, solar company's representatives' ballpark. I've made it clear we'd like to move on. Um, haven't heard back. So, okay. Um, their ballpark. Yeah. All right, so we'll just leave it on there. Um, Commonwealth of Mass procurement charts. <laughs> okay. So, Procurement 101. Yeah, yeah. This, this, this could be a huge topic. I thought I would take just one small piece Good. of it for tonight. Um, and I think I emailed you, but I also am Thank giving you, you copies. You. Um, this you. is the state procurement charts. And I mean, what little I know about procurement is mainly through um, chairing the CPC and having projects and having to get answers. Dale was our former procurement agent. Um, 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 he wasn't overly enthusiastic about <laughs> the position. So there are a lot of different charts here. They're all based the same way. These are revisions from 2016. Essentially, there are three major categories. Projects under $10,000, projects 10000 to fifty, and then over fifty. And whether it's building construction contracts or public works or uh, construction materials, they're all basically the same. I wanted to bring attention particularly to the very last page, which is procurement of supplies and services. Actually, the other ones are quite similar, but the basic overall um, uh, pattern on these are things under $10,000. The procurement procedure is simply sound business practices. Um, no advertisement required, and the award can be given to uh, um, uh, the responsible person offering the best price. Um, the in-between range, the ten to fifty thousand uh, uh, written purchase description, um, ideally getting three quotes, um, no advertising, and then theoretically the person with the uh, um, uh, qual uh, yeah, quality sufficient for the job at the lowest price is the one that's chosen, and then for over fifty thousand sealed bids and that whole process, which is a big deal. Um, so this is what I understand about this, and the main thing about this is, you know, not making a big mistake. Um, the um, and and of course, you know, being government and being lawyerly and legal, um, then there are ten million exceptions in here, and and it, it gets really tricky. One of the things I noticed in our correspondence actually this week is a bulletin from the Office of Inspector General who oversees all this, and there's a half-hour program on um, um, peer procurement training, a video. So I'll try to do that within the next week or so, and if that looks Perfect. fruitful, I'll pass it on. Yeah, I certainly, I, we will limp along. That's not the right word. We will continue along as we have been all along. Little tiny town, have not had the town administrator that presumably has expertise. Uh, hopefully that next person will take this on. And I, I um, do think what we've done over the last year and a half, so, yeah. um, you know, the administrative, uh, the town administrator. Uh, certainly, I think that falls in here, and we've done it correctly. Yep, we got the absolutely. Bids. Right. Same with the fire consultant. Yep. I think to the um, the projector. Yeah, the is IT. Is under ten thousand. Right. So that piece and the way we went through the Silver Lake Regional, certainly, I think the business practice aspect of it is. So I yep. think we're we're. Maybe just because we're trying to do the right thing anyways. No, and I think we are. And I think we're actually quite a bit more fastidious than some towns are. Yeah. So that's one half of procurement. The other half is, is, I mean, in big towns with a lot going on, there's a whole purchase order system and right. that whole bit. And uh, we are so far away from that. And right. somehow I think we're functioning pretty well in the way that we've just moved along with this. Just so you're aware, we don't use purchase orders, but... I had to get a sign one time, and uh, 
I needed a, the vendor I was dealing with wouldn't take it unless they had a purchase order. So Dale just got me a purchase order. Yeah. Just made one. Yeah, sure. One. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, two. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't be hard to do. Um, so I, that is truly 99% of what I know about procurement, and thank God I think it's enough along the way, and otherwise we have town council if we're not sure. Right. Yeah. yeah, great. I'm glad you're doing this. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And that segues right nicely into uh, combo combois. Combies. Combies. So I guess, is that on the agenda? Well, it's procurement. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, um, so there were two pieces in this. I, I, the uh, Dennett School um, water system had to go out for bid, and so there was work to be done with combis. I know very little about this other than we got an email also last week that we had to update our stuff for the new fiscal year, and I took care of that today. Um, and I guess they simply, they are certainly the listing agency for the state when there is a big project to go out to bid, and I guess they keep track of it along the way. But I, it's the first I've seen or heard of that, yeah. mainly because we haven't done so many big right. things True. like that. Yeah. But is that, that's where we can also go on and see if this, where do we go? There's some place in the state that allows you to look at um, excess, like furniture, oh. et cetera. Oh, surplus? Yeah. You know, honestly, I don't know if that's this or not. I mean, I am new to this as of the last right. six days. I can look around in there. And, if um, you find that, I'd be interested in Because actually, I think we probably sold some stuff that we had on that uh, yeah. an old truck or something like that. I certainly can take a look around and see if I can find it. You might even right. find that in your half an hour. Um, that what might turn out more than I want to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Too much procurement. Okay. Townhouse legal strategy meeting follow-up. Very good meeting last week. Um, we had uh, a great attendance, much better than I think any of us were anticipating. Yeah. And um, a lot of really good in input, feedback, back and forth. Um, there was definitely interest in um, continuing. So we'll continue to refine it. And so can I bring up my legal? Yeah. I sent a note out today. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you saw it. I did. And I, the thing that we have great people running these boards and commissions, and it just seemed a little um, to me that we need to give them more flexibility somehow. And if we gave them, I was thinking, if we gave them an automatic two hours to work, you know, over 10 committees at $170 an hour. That's like 3800 something like that. Let's say four, under, a little under $4,000. And if we had some sort of uh, instructions that said, look, this is when you're in a situation where you don't have time to come to the board of selectmen. You got something going on that really is immediate. I'd feel comfortable myself. You know, these people know what they're doing or they wouldn't be head of the boards. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was a way to maybe put in something like that. And yet, if there was anything that was going to result in something bigger, so all of a sudden you're talking 10, 20, 30, you know, hours where it gets up into big money, that we'd need some sort of a system that would capture that. So it was just a draft to get us thinking about it. I was a little hesitant. Um, just I think that we've done a, a good job um, trying to control legal, and I feel like we've been really accessible to where someone contacts us in an, we've had some kind of uh, heightened situations where they need an answer right away, and I think we've been responsive in giving them the authority to contact counsel. That's my only concern is that I think we have been accessible, um, that maybe we don't have as much control if we do this, but I think it's a, on the other hand, I think it's a, a good idea. I think I'd be more willing maybe one hour than two hours yeah. because then they get have the chance to at least speak with counsel, get the ball rolling, and then if there requires further mm -hmm. um, follow-up, then we know about it and you know we're involved. But then also when they ask us, we're aware of the situation ahead of time so that 
I can communicate it to you when you know I learn of these things so that we all know right away. I th and I think that's, we'll know faster where we have to get permission rather than where we're giving permission after the fact. You know, we could have gone by, depending on when they meet, when we find out they actually met with council. I, um, well, one, I just read it an hour ago, and so I want to think about it. I mean, I think you're exactly right. There is kind of an issue, and it does slow things down. I, I'd be very concerned. I mean, I think this has happened in the past, that stuff just starts snowballing, and they're into 10 or 20 hours before we even start. And you know how town council is. They easily, on one question, can get down their own path. Um, so I, I think you noted in the email that it would be a little bit of an administrative problem. I just, I feel like, um, I mean, I agree it's a problem. My, my initial reaction is maybe um, would be to simply refine our process and um, maybe say, I mean, we've always said that if there was something that was real time sensitive or an emergency, they could come, that the chair could approve it. And um, it feels to me if we simply emphasize that, and I have complete faith in the chair making a decision anywhere along too. the way, or for that matter, if you weren't around the vice chair, and I, I, th I think the problem would more or less be solved. I mean, I really like them coming to us and talking to them about it to the degree that we can give them direction, and I very much like hearing what we're getting into before we start getting into it. Maybe if we simply emphasize in an emergency, we can approve it right away, or in a time-sensitive issue, go to the chair, go to the vice chair, and we're glad to do it right away. And then the chair or the vice chair could give counsel, all right, you get an hour and keep it to that before you come back to us. So that, off the top of my head, I thought that was a much easier solution. Well, and that needs to be communicated. And I don't know as if people know that now, that they think that there's a process and, oh, we've got to come before the board, you know. But yeah. in an emergency, we're accessible. And um, we will certainly give people the authority to contact council. Yeah, uh, we should I, probably I, reinforce that. I think it's that. a little bit different than it used to be when potentially um, even one of the selectmen might give permission and they'd be off in a, or even the selectmen would be off in a 20-hour thing along the way. Um, I mean, my other concern actually is, I, you know, the chair of ZBA if, w wouldn't know how much time uh, the attorneys are putting in anywhere along the way, nor would we know until the bill comes. So I totally appreciate the issue, and I think we streamline it a lot. I think we shouldn't decide tonight anyway oh, no, because no. it wasn't on no. the agenda. Right. No. But maybe that's the start. Maybe we we'll put yeah. it on the agenda next week, yeah. and we each have a chance to refine our thoughts. Yeah, this was it. just more to get us thinking about it. I, it came to me out of our uh, meeting with Rich Bowen and you know the 15 boards, that like Debbie Anderson with her issue around you know a board member and yeah. Um, I mean, I totally agree. I spend, I have spent and continue to spend so much time agonizing over stuff that often is a five minute legal conversation yeah. that would take care of it. And, uh, um, okay, so let's think about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about it next week. And, um, you know, we are trying the preventative legal approach, and we certainly want to. Be involved in things sooner, and you know we encourage people to reach out to council if they have sure, questions absolutely. because we want to do the right thing from the right. get-go. Right. So yeah. um, let's put it on uh, for next week. A, a little tiny side story on this because, and I think we've done a great job of communicating that we're moving toward this preventative law thing. Um, Duxbury last week or the week before hired KMP I saw to that. council, yeah. and one of the main things that swayed them was um, KMP's um, presentation of preventative law and it's interesting that that's come out of nowhere we had never heard that and I actually wonder a little bit I may be dreaming this up that we may have been a little bit of an impetus in I, think uh, we so, so, I think we were I think we were well they didn't want to be a fourth selectman but <laughs> yeah, right there you go. Yeah. all right so we'll bring back legal next week okay. um, WATD weekly interview of BOS Agenda with Dan McCready, and then I think there was Boston Globe yeah, as well. Boston Globe yeah. as okay, well. so um, what are your thoughts? Um, 
So these were uh, emails, I guess, that came. I guess we all got it. Um, I spoke to Dan McCready, uh, I don't know, earlier in the week. In any event, I, it's, the, the key on each, each of these, it feels to me the chair should have first crack at it, and it certainly feels if the chair doesn't want to, I think we should just go down the line that the vice chair, uh, the lowly clerk, that's me, next. Um, I did the uh, ATD thing this morning, because I think you asked me to, and uh, it was, uh, I mean, it was cute. She asked two questions, and it was over. It yep. was live, so, you know, I really had to rein things in. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I am glad to do either one, but I... Um, do you want to take one, too? I, I can't do these at work, and yeah. I think a lot of this happens on Mondays, and I'm just yeah. not available. I'll so take I the don't Globe, know. because the Globe is maybe once every six months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So I get Monday morning so in, you bet get, in between clinical duties, yeah, actually. Yeah, you get W-A-T-D, and you'll do the Globe. But if you have a problem, let me know, and yeah. I'd be glad I to had okay. acupuncture needles in a dog this morning and was running out the room to do my 9 a.m. interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've got that squared away. All right, um, correspondence. Already? Already. All right. um, so we, we got a bunch of this already. Um, so uh, these are um, uh, an announcement of MCPPO, Mass Certified Public Purchasing Official Program. Um, there are three different programs. I think this probably ties in a little with procurement, the purchasing part. This is pretty specialized stuff, and I don't think um, anything we'll be involved in right now. Um, in correspondence last week was something from the Census Bureau, things that we need to do ahead of that for street things. They look quite complicated. I went to Tara, and she was well aware, and town clerks are well aware of that. She's going to take care of that. Um, uh, Let's save that for a minute. This is a note from the law firm that had told us about a foreclosure at um, 150 County Road, and that auction has been postponed until September, September 6th. We'll let that one sit for a minute. Um, this is uh, an announcement from uh, uh, the state about um, um, implementing a, a conference and implementing best practices for municipal officials, municipal officials, including financial management, housing, cybersecurity. Uh, that is at in Worcester at Holy Cross College, uh, September 18th. Um, I oh, cannot okay. do that. What um, did you say the topics were? Um, state and local officials uh, share ideas and attend to workshops implemented of best practices in the area of financial management, housing production, cybersecurity, regionalization, transportation, energy, and environment. All right. I think I'd like to go on the housing production. Is there any cost for this, or is it free? Um, they do not note it, but I, I, most of those... I've gone to a fair number of them out there, and at most it's like $50 or something. Holy Cross? Yeah, we put it in. Yeah. Okay. And that's what time? Um, Actually, can I take that? Set. You Thank can you. have that. Awesome. I may go with that. I may want to do that uh, technology. Sure. Okay. We did that last time. Yeah, we did that last yeah. time, which yeah. worked out really well. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put it on my schedule. Okay. Perfect. Um, Plus, it's a nice place to go. It's a beautiful campus. Oh, up on that hill, looking down, that so nice, nice building. Oh, yeah, it's so nice. Really if I could go back to college, I'd go there in a minute. That's pretty. <laughs> um, this is uh, advertisement for bids. This is the, the public notice to bidders for the Dennett School uh, water treatment system. Um, they're accepting bids until August 30th. Um, and I guess they'll be, well, that couldn't be, Doc, yeah. oh, except until August 30th. Uh, this is John's um, email. Of, Legal. About, oh, no. He wanted to amend the minutes to include. The people. No, who no, that's no that's actually, that's what we just one. talked about. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's what we talked about. I think he cut and pasted that a whole I bunch did. of times. I <laughs> did. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep pasting it. Um, this is um, virtual towns and schools. Um, um, this is a training on 
custom web applications for the public sector. Uh, we may have enough going on in our lives right now. I agree. Uh, I, agree. I mean, that's a useful project. Absolutely but. useful. All right, now, a couple more here. Um, all right. Um, so this is a letter from Richard and Tracy Urowitz um, um, regarding the bite incident and just their description um, saying that they felt that um, they had never restrained uh, any um, examination of their property or their animals and just wanted to let us know that and asked if there were any future meetings where this subject came up, uh, if they'd be invited as well. Absolutely. So, um, just read that. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a second. Okay. No, right. go ahead. Go ahead. Um, and then the last one is um, this is a, an email that I sent out um, uh, about remote participation oh, yeah. that maybe was instituted by Rich Bowen. And um, when I had nothing better to do, I stumbled, and this, it, the intent was, or as I understand this thing, we can vote to authorize remote participation. If we do so, it's not only us, it's every board, commission, and committee. And there are a bunch of rules, and that's all fine. We were wondering about this in terms of solving the chronic lack of quorum for planning. Right. Um, so in um, uh, 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 section 29 or chapter 29 about remote participation, I came across this thing that said quorum of the body, including the chair, um, uh, uh, shall be physically present at the meeting site. And concern because if we're trying to solve the planning board thing, um, if that's it, then that wouldn't work. John um, found section thir uh, or um, uh, chapter 30A, a different section about local commission on disability. The way I read that, John, is that that was a um, for um, a a a local commission committee or something on disability specifically. Oh, I didn't read it that way. Um, I don't have that. Uh... In any event, I think this is probably a simple thing for Rich to let us know about. And I... yeah. The way I read it was that, uh, first of all, I didn't think it was the disability section. It didn't say that. It what? It wasn't, uh, it didn't, I didn't believe that was the disability section of the law. No, it wasn't, but I don't know if I can easily. It said that if, that. as long as the chair was physically present, then somebody else could participate remotely but it would it does but I, I read it to be for a local commission on disability I didn't that see that um, in any so event, we, we need rich to just yeah. give us a so quick I'm, answer uh, or KP I don't care um, well since Rich started with it yeah. Yeah, right. that's true that's um, right. he did I am, yes. or I, I'm glad for you to do it I'm glad to just write no, no, it and go ahead. no no you so we'll just get that solved hopefully I mean that'll be a five minute thing sure um, Rich, um, assuming um, going back to Debbie for a minute assuming that if she's physically present that they could you know dial in now it has to go to town meeting or not no. Um, I, as I understand it, this is a vote of this board. And then once it's done, it immediately takes effect. Yes. Um, I mean, the key is everyone has a shot at it. I honestly, I, I, don't, I know the downside that before you know it, you're doing phone conference calls um, or videos rather than meeting. Um, boy, the upside is, I mean, the private sector, the nonprofit sector, it's the way people, it's sure. the way things work. Sure. And, um, my daughter works from home all the time on Skype. Um, I mean, I think if we did it, I'd certainly want to strongly encourage physical presence, but uh, it's well, just an option. The other thing we might want to do is say, uh, we won't approve it until, unless there's a video. You know, we've, we've been moving towards having the boards do video. I'm not sure we can require that. I mean, the state law says audio is fine. Right. but. There's no reason we can't say it, because we're the ones who've got to vote the law, uh, vote that in. 
It's just a thought. It's well, a thought. and then there would be proof, too, that there was remote yeah. participation. Plus there would be some catalyst to say, hey, I guess I ought to physically be there. I mean, I'd be, I'd be interested in doing it if it takes care of a quorum problem. I'm not sure I'm interested in doing it if it doesn't solve that issue. Exactly. Yeah, right. yeah, there'd I be think no you're purpose right. if it doesn't well, solve the Well, the purpose quorum. would be is if I was traveling, I mean, you could call in and not miss it, and you'd have yeah. to put up with my two cents worth. And if you were sailing, you could call in on that. No. If I was sailing, I would not call in. <laughs> <laughs> I know the town is in very good hands. <laughs> I'll see you when I get back. All right. <laughs> okay, so okay. you're going to check on that one? Yeah, I will. Perfect. All right, uh, uh, Plumpton Halifax Express. Uh, well, there's a note about the hazardous waste day that, um, that went so well. Um, the fire department grant, uh, nice, nice picture, picture half really page nice. picture. That's a good picture. Yeah, um, it is. It's a beautiful picture. Uh, centerfold this week is the teddy bear um, uh, tea time at the library. Those kids look like they are having fun. The adults actually look like they're having fun. And then the last page is an art exhibit by Ryan um, Gillis uh, at the library. And that looks interesting, and I want to make it over there and yeah, see that. Sure does. And um, with thankfulness, I report that that takes care of it. Can you okay. All right. Um, dates to remember 821, we're meeting at 6 p.m., and 828, uh, we've got appointments with the fire consultants. Mm -hmm at 6 and 8 p.m. So those will be, I'm um, looking forward to that. Um, besides that, that looks like that's all we've got. We'll have something uh, most likely next week, a working meeting with um, Bernie Lynch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Bernie says, Lynch yeah. too. So we'll probably have those on off yeah. nights or possibly on um, the Monday, we'll try to get the assessors in. All right, um, goals, goals for coming years. Financial management, um, I completely forgot to contact Monica about our report, so I will do that when I get home uh, to get us the, uh, the draft of our financial policies. Um, public safety, anything? Um, uh, no, they meet... Uh... I saw them walking by, um, P3. Oh, he, they were, P3 is going down and having a preliminary session with planning okay. just to actually proactively be on top of things, Good. Um, uh, which is great. Um, public safety meets next, uh, this when? Is it? No. Maybe, maybe, uh, no, I guess it's next week. Um, and I probably will be able to go to that. Okay, terrific. Technology? No, no updates really. Um, Tara is drawing up the list of uh, emails, and we'll give them to Mike Rodriguez. He's waiting for them, and we'll go forward. Perfect. Grants, um, anything with grants? All right, mm -hmm. men, volunteerism? I don't have anything? No. Okay, all right, that's, we'll just continue to hold it. All right, minutes, um, eight, seven. Well, back to that, uh, Heidi, has we have, she ever responded to us? No, I'll, I'll touch base with her again, too, about bringing her in to talk to us about that, um, the program. You know, it, I, my only concern there is that, you know, she probably, I'm not sure she's going to spend a lot of time on it. I wonder if that were too much of a time obligation, if even just a phone conversation with one of us. Okay. Yeah. All right. To talk about grants? Yeah. Okay. If, if she could come in, though, I, I would. I mean, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, well, but if she can't, if I she think can't, you're right. Then we'll, yeah. we'll have a plan B. Okay. All right, uh, minutes from 8-7, uh, we did not receive those, so we'll hold those. We do have minutes that um, Mark submitted for our meeting on 8-9. Those looked good to me. I liked your addition. Yeah. With the, uh, the amendment? The, yeah, that's yeah. The, that's um, fine. Great. Who okay. okay, thanks. So I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of 8-9 as amended. Second. All Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. All right, so um, rants and raves, do you want to mix it up tonight? Uh, two things before. Um, one, I, I'm going to give you this sometime. I don't know if you guys have this, but it's just a little history of the Plimpton. How we huh? got to be the size we are. At one time it was called Wenatuxkit? Yeah, that's what they say. What does that mean? That must be an Indian word. Indian word, yeah. I don't know. Probably means swamp land. <laughs> <laughs> Are mosquitoes? 
horse flies, <laughs> horse flies and mosquitoes. Ticks. Anyways, that's for you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you. Debbie Anderson, just back to that for a minute. Um, she did send me a note saying, um, you know, she got the board member really, she doesn't feel comfortable having that person come down the stairs because of their disability. Asking if there's a room that she could meet in up, you know, on this floor. And uh, I don't know who else is in here on Monday night, but I would think somehow we ought to make a, we make a room available. Mm. Other than, I mean, at, at worst, the, the lunch room's usually available. Yeah. Or I, maybe I, Tara's. Tara. Um, conference room. Yeah, other small than conference finance room is usually available. Or even the town coordinator office. Yeah. Um, there should always be enough space. Okay, I, I'll go back and just say yes. We'll, we'll work with her. Absolutely, okay. yeah, definitely. Okay, anything else before we answer raves? Nope. Okay, do you want to go first or you want to mix it up tonight? So I can't, I have to ask though, where, what prompted this? You... Um, I'm heavy into ancestry. All right. <laughs> well, so it's town ancestry. And my right. wife's family used to live in uh, the house next to the country store. Uh-huh. In fact, uh, the house next to the country store. So Bruce, uh, with, um, no, wait a minute. Bruce. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, the little, yeah. yeah. There's a long story associated Ooh. with that, but it's a yeah. family story. So I run across stuff. So, raves. Uh, I had a rave for uh, the hazardous waste, but that we've talked about that. And it was well done. It really was. Mm -hmm. I'm very pleased that they pulled it off the way they did. So, I have a little rave for a neighbor. Uh, one of the things that this neighbor does is if you go down Ring Road, you will find as you pass Crescent Street, it is mowed all the way down to the stream and back the other side. And Mr. Dunbar has been doing that for quite a while. <laughs> and I think that's just a neat thing, you know. So, right. you know, there's probably other people doing things like that in town, but I'm not aware of it. I am aware of that one and good. Oh, very nice. All right, I've got um, a rant, and my rant is just the things happening again in the world and the need for tolerance and how diversity is so important to, you know, this nation. And um, it just, it was a, a troubling week, and um, it just, I don't know, it just, it's very troubling. So that's all I've got. There's a lot of great things um, happening in Plimpton, but... Um, that's, that's my rant for today. Um, so my rant is, um, it's probably a little similar to one I did a little bit ago, but I, 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 um, the flood of emails where what we're dealing with and actually the amount of stuff we have on our plates right now, and I, I, I'm, may, maybe it only makes me all the more careful. We're trying to be extraordinarily careful that something important doesn't fall through the tracks. And maybe the assessors and the hiring of the lawyer is a good example of that. And just all the more. So the rant is just a lot on plate need for um, vigilance, I think, that we don't, that we don't miss something. Um, the rave is actually last Wednesday night was, I think that went amazingly well. Um, um, and I think the side piece of that is I looked out at all these people, this little town, so much talent, some people with a few quirks, but that was a room full of people really trying hard to do well. And we are like really, really blessed to have the people yeah. working we have with. And we haven't, I see a lot of towns where it gets into an institutional kind of tops down thing. We don't have that, and that's good. Everybody's, uh, and I think it was good for the people themselves, and I think they liked having a forum. Yep. We gotta make sure we keep that forum going. And uh, the other rave in that, I think, which I mentioned that night, is I think we took a risk, and they took a risk, and I think something real beautiful is beginning to grow out of it. And, uh, I mean, it's gonna be a little messy, but. Uh, Always is. Yeah, we'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, along the way, it just was a great, uh, Great communication forum. It really was to find out what concerns people have and what they're working on, and um, for everybody to hear what other what challenges other departments have. It's it's just nice, and we're all on the same team working together, and it just really felt like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. With you. So here. there. 
<laughs> All right. Anything else for tonight? Good enough. I don't think so. All right. All right. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See you next week. Uh...